Since the start of this year, several professionals have essentially predicted that Bitcoin will return to the range of $10,000 to $12,000. There isn't much support between here and there, but guess what? It stopped there and is now about 17 years old. As a result, it has survived a great deal of uncertainty regarding the state of the cryptocurrency market. And one of the things that has amazed us is how Ethereum, the blockchain, and Bitcoin all operated without missing a beat. No transactions were ever disrupted. When the markets froze in 2008 and 2009, the banks stopped processing. They had no idea where the counterparty risk lay, and there was a lack of information and transparency. The FED was forced to intervene, and the global financial system came dangerously close to collapse. Since we can track every transaction on the network by its IP address, it hasn't been a near-death experience for cryptocurrency. By looking at the IP address, we can track the money, and the network's decentralization is also very important. You know, Sam bankman fried lack of enthusiasm about Bitcoin was quite intriguing. Well, it's starting to become clear to me now. I see why he didn't like it. Now that I understand, he never did. It illustrates the dual nature of decentralization and transparency because there is no way to control it like he could with his empire because it is not centralized. The newest SEC commissioner, Jamie Lizarag, emphasized the significance of decentralization and transparency, showing that regulators are starting to grasp this and a takeaway from this situation, focusing on those two factors, might be highly beneficial for the ecosystem of crypto assets from a regulatory standpoint. And just to put the consequences of cryptography into perspective, there were probably more than 10,000 crypto assets in the entire ecosystem at its height. However, the majority of them, or many of them, will not be very valuable. The total ecosystem of digital assets which peaked at between $2.9 and $3 trillion, is presently at about $800 billion. Now consider that Apple is a $2.3 trillion firm with one share of the market. This only serves to highlight how early it is and how unlikely it is that what has happened in the cryptocurrency space would result in a major financial disaster. Now that additional fallout is likely to occur, we believe that we can identify Dimension, one of the rumored cases that wasn't rumored. I believe we have a lot of information on this case. DCG, Digital Currency Group, controls Genesis, and it may have borrowed about $1 billion from Genesis. $1.2 trillion were claimed in the Lehman Brothers bankruptcy, just to give you an idea. The concept that we are emphasizing is that with transparency, you will have a lot better understanding of counterparty risk. So we are not talking about anything similar. Instead, we are talking about counterpart risk once more. Let me know in the comments if you have any other questions about investing. Let's return to the video. The counterparty risk should decline with decentralization. Closed ecosystems are not a good idea, and smart contract automated decisions are preferable to human-driven ones in times of crisis. Seems to be more illogical than, say, in the example of Sam the Banker Fried and FTX, which might be phony. Therefore, I believe that every time the ecosystem for crypto assets goes through a battle test, I feel better. If you observe Bitcoin's trajectory, you will notice the extreme fluctuations. On our podcast yesterday, Jeremy Siegel mentioned that he didn't believe there had ever been an asset where more people had made so much money despite these losses in just 12 or 13 years. The Bitcoin Monthly, which will be released on Monday, will demonstrate that our conviction is as strong as ever. Even after this battle test, how do they seem on chain analytics? Based on on chain analytics that demonstrate enormous capitulation, which we generally only see at bottoms, the outlook is bright. Because many traders and hedge funds interested in cryptocurrency simply look at the charts and keep pressing until they get what they want or what they assume will happen, we are quite astonished that the price didn't drop back down to 10 to 12,000. Why did that not occur? Now, I'm not saying it won't, but I believe the odds have decreased fairly significantly. 
I am also really amazed by the relative stability, particularly to some extent in Bitcoin and other, the financial success of disruptive innovation. Now, many of you are aware that the pundits, whether they work in the media or for our company, have labeled what ARK does as tech or profitless tech and concept capital. People have drawn comparisons between what we're doing and the events of the IT and telecom bubble and bust. Our techniques have actually performed worse than they did during the bust. Despite the fact that a large number of businesses failed, many others returned and become corrupt. They entered the Nasdaq, went bankrupt, and yet for at least some of our portfolios, the price loss in the Nasdaq at the time was not as terrible as our own price falls. It is absurd because the foundations for what is taking on in innovation now were all laid during the 20 years that culminated in the tech and telecom bubble, followed by a bust. There were many bankruptcies because there was too much capital pursuing too few prospects at too early a stage. Now we don't think that's the case. We think we are prepared for prime time. And you can find plenty of examples of that in our studies. In order to take advantage of some of the most significant investment opportunities of our lifetime, we therefore advise our firms to spend aggressively now that we are ready for prime time. Hope you have learned something from this video. What are your thoughts? Comment down below. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to click the like button and also don't forget to subscribe to the channel and hit the notification bell for you to be updated on our latest videos. See you in the next video. Thanks for watching. Want to learn more and be more financially literate? Click on the next videos we have in our channel showing on the screen right now.